Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Thank you for your grace to minister your truth. Holy Spirit, we hand over this whole broadcast and everyone that is watching and listening. That you will minister truth to their hearts. And I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, even right now, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed by the power of your spirit, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. The sick is getting healed. Oh, hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Man, praise God. Now then, last week I, I began to share to it for two weeks now. We've been talking about the prophecy of Joel and the prophecy of Jeremiah, speaking about what will happen at the end time. Praise God. And and I showed you some things um, last week, and I told you we're going to continue. Now we, this week we're we're continuing from that series. But then we, we are talking more on fulfilling prophecies. Praise God. Now, turn your Bibles with me to the book of Joel, chapter 2. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Joel, chapter 2 and verse 28. Hallelujah. And then it says, verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterward. Now, remember, we talked about this afterward. Last week, we talked about it. And I'm going to go back to those things. But let's just read it through. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. And also on my main, main, main servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in, I'll pour out my spirit in those days, and I will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and pillar of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And as it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnants whom the Lord calls. Now you see, this is a prophecy by the prophet Joel. Just like last week, I, I shared something with you. Like, okay, on the day of Pentecost, Many believe that this prophecy was fulfilled. You know, that's, that's the mistake we make many times. We, we rush to the conclusion. We rush to conclusion when something just begins. Now, Joel didn't just say, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And then you see the, the, the spirit being poured. And then you, you say, oh, the prophecy of Joel has been fulfilled. Joel said beyond the outpouring of the Spirit. When the outpouring comes, he began to tell what follows the outpouring. Now listen, we are supposed to read down to the end and then watch has everything come to pass? Yes or no? If it hasn't come to pass completely, then we know that it's not the fulfillment of Joel's prophecy in full. See, I told you last week, I said, on the day of Pentecost, what happened was the beginning. See, because Peter speaking by the Spirit of God then said, I will pour out of my spirit. That's not what Joel said. Joel said, I will pour out my spirit. You need to understand that. That's why I stressed Peter was speaking by the spirit. The same way Joel was speaking by the spirit. So the Holy Spirit did not make a mistake. He was clear. 
See? Joel said, I will pour out my spirit. Peter said, I will pour out of my spirit. And he was quoting Joel. So the Holy Spirit was letting us know that this is not the full out pouring. This is, this is the pouring by measure to start the process. Because you see, let me tell you this. When it comes to fulfillment of prophecies, it takes only the Holy Spirit walking. And it takes the Holy Spirit coming upon men to do his bidding, to begin and fulfill it. Now, there is no way any prophecy will be fulfilled without the agency of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible, in, in the Bible says we should pray for all men. Paul was admonishing his son Timothy. He says pray for all men, for kings, for those in authority, so that we will live a quiet and peaceable life. I remember one time I was, I was, I was teaching on this, and then, you know, praying for all men. And then the, the Spirit of God told me, he spoke to me, he said, do you know the prayer points to pray? He just told you pray for all men. So what was the prayer point to pray for all men? Then I thought about it. I said, yeah. Yeah, Paul says we should pray for all men. But he didn't tell us how to pray. So, so what do you pray? He said, Father, I pray for all men today. In Jesus' name. So, so what was the content of the prayer? He said, we make that mistake many times. He said, go and bless those people. And someone said, no, someone said, oh, pastor, please bless me. It's okay, you are blessed. It is well with you. Amen. See? So what is the blessing? Telling somebody you are blessed doesn't mean you have blessed the person. You know, we do this a lot. We, we wear in service and someone takes up the microphone. He says, oh, let's praise the name of the Lord. So what do we do? Lord, we praise you. <laughs> See? So let's glorify his name. Oh, Lord, we glorify your name. How have you glorified his name? <laughs> praise God. It, it has turned to words and response, you know, responding back with words. Can you just bless the name of the Lord? Father, I bless your name. I bless your name. I bless your name. So what is the blessing? And that's why many times people are confused. For example, in, 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 in the Garden of Eden, in the book of Genesis, the Bible says, And God blessed them and said, so God did what God did. See, the blessing is what he was doing to them. But what is the real blessing? What is the content of the blessing? The content of the blessing is what he said. So God, Adam, talking about Adam and Eve, and the Bible said God blessed them and said, be fruitful, content of the blessing. Multiply, content of the blessing. Fill up the earth, content of the blessing. Have dominion, content of the blessing. Are you getting it now? So, when we say, bless the Lord, don't just say, Lord, I bless you. You haven't blessed the Lord. When you say, glorify his name, oh, Father, I glorify your name, you haven't glorified his name. When you say glorify the name of the Lord, and then you begin to speak to the Lord. You say, Lord, you know what? I remember three years ago, I was in that mess. <laughs> Lord, you remember how, how you just spoke to me, and I believed you, and I came out of that mess in one week. What, what, what everyone thought I was going to be there forever, I came out in one week. What are you doing now? You are glorifying his name. You are glorifying his name. And that's why many people don't see results in their life. Because they say, I, I bless the Lord. Lord, I bless you. Oh, Father, I bless you. Jesus, I bless you. What is the blessing? I glorify your name. I honor you, Lord. Why is the honor? And you know how funny it is. And you say, Hi, Lord, I honor you. Lord, I honor you. And then you hear the Lord say, Son, I want you to clear your bank account and give it to Susan. Say, hey, 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 Father, mm. <laughs> I think this prayer has to stop now. <laughs> so where's the honor? See? And that's the mistake we make. So someone says, I serve God, but I don't see the result in my life. Where is your service? 
Eh, I, I go to church by 7 a.m. When church starts by 9 a.m., I, I clean the church. I, I do this and I do this. Who told you that is service? God only accepts service that comes from the place of the Spirit. I'm telling you the truth. If you don't serve by the Spirit. Now, what do I mean serve by the Spirit? So, so what do you mean? So, how do I clean the church by the Spirit? Do I go to church and say, Roku, ma, broku, bo, 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 dikipi, brakataka, and the whole place will be clean? No. Listen, you are going to clean that church. Ah, nebo sikata. This is what separates Christians. This is what separates us. What do I mean separate? Tells this is what puts the difference. Why this one is doing well and this one doesn't seem to know what's going on. What I'm about to share with you now. And then you, you go going to clean that church. And then you, you, you wake up in the morning and say, Father, you know, this house that I'm going to is the physical place where we gather together to learn your word, to do righteous things in your name. You know what? I feel the place ought to be clean. So with that mindset, I'm going this morning. Holy Spirit, accept my sacrifice. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you're involved with me. I want that place sparkling clean so your presence will dwell there. Yes, I know you don't dwell in a physical house, but it's about because we are congregating, I want your spirit to be poured out on us. I want to enjoy your presence. And then you begin to praise him like that and talk to him like that. And while you're on your way, while you're doing what you're doing, the word of God comes to you. It can be as simple as Ashaya Kaba. It can be as simple as move that chair to this place. He said, okay. And then you move the chair. See, let me tell you the truth. The more, anything you do for the Lord, the moment his word comes to you consigning that thing, it means he has accepted that thing. And that's what I tell you concerning tithes and offerings. Don't just give your tithe anyhow. Don't just give your offerings anyhow. Oh, I, I pray, I pray, I pray understanding comes to you. I used to give offering for many years and yet I was getting broke. See, Because I felt it's the right thing to do. You give offerings. You know, you go to church, you give offerings in, in service. If you don't have offering, oh, you must find something to give. I, I used to be that way. Until one time the word of the Lord came to me because I got to that point in my life where I was tired. And I was like, okay, Lord, this thing doesn't seem to be working. Let's know now. Are we quitting it? I was already a pastor then. Are we quitting this thing? And then the word of the Lord came to me. And, and, and the Lord spoke to me. The first thing the Lord said to me, he said, so, you know, he, he had spoken to me and said, he said, you know why things are not working? I said, why? And he said, because you waste a lot of money. I said, Lord, it's when you have money, you can say you're wasting it. A broke man doesn't waste money. And the Lord said, no, sir. And he asked me that day, he said, what, why do you give offerings in church? Now that was an awkward question to hear from the Lord. He said, nah, we give offerings. Now he said, no, why do you give offerings? Ah, your word says we should not come to your presence empty-handed. He said, no, he asked me again, why do you give offerings? At that point, I said, okay, Lord, teach me. Because you don't form like you know in his presence. I said, okay, Lord, I confess, I don't know teach me. And then the Lord spoke to me that day and says from, and then he, he taught me how a farmer is deliberate in his farm. In, he, he does, a farmer doesn't just go to the farm and say, hey, um, give me a seat. He starts throwing it anyway. A farmer is deliberate. See this portion of land, I'm going to farm maize. This portion of land, I'm going to farm soya beans. I'm going to farm this. See, that's how deliberate a farmer is. A good farmer now. He monitors the season. He knows the kind of harvest he's expecting. He knows his economic plan. So he knows how to plant short-term 
um, um, seed that will produce harvest in two, three months. He knows long-term harvest, cash crop that will produce in, in, in from five to ten years. He knows all, all those things. And then the Lord spoke to me that day. He says, from henceforth, every offering you give in a service, you name it the seed to meet your needs for that week. <laughs> I never heard this before from anyone. I never understood. Now I've heard messages on giving. I've read books on giving. You understand what I'm talking about? But I've never heard this this way. And you know, see, that's the thing when the Holy Ghost speaks to you. Your eyes just pops open. Because his word brings light. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Bible said the entrance of the world brings light. That was what happened to me. I'm like, whoa. And I told myself that they have found the secret. And I will never be broke again for the rest of my life. Whoa. Now you see, I'm, I've shared this with you now. You can take it and go, oh, oh, I know what I've been missing now. I know what I've been missing now. Okay, from now on, every service, I will call it the seed to meet my needs for that week. You may not get the result. So how do I get the result? I'll share that with you tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God, because my time is up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.